G'day folks, welcome to another episode of the WP Elevation Podcast, the show where we help you start and grow your very own digital agency. My name is Troy Dean, I'll be your host this week, as I am every week actually, and my feature guest this week all the way from the United States of America in uh, the state of Washington is one of our most successful members in our program right now, Noah Britton from Thrive. Hey Noah, how you doing my friend? Very good. Nice to be on the show. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for agreeing to do this. Uh, now, for those who don't know, who is Noah Britton? Where are you from? Why are you here? What are we talking about? Why might I have you on the show? Yeah, so I am from Seattle. I own Thrive. We do WordPress consulting, and I I love WP Elevation. So I'm just happy to to be here and just, I don't know, share some of my story. And, uh, the, you know, I've been in business for 17 years, and the last two have been completely different than the first 15. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. One of the the reason I wanted to get you on the show is one of the most rewarding things as a coach is when you see or or an educator of any sort is when you see someone taking massive action on the things that they've learned and getting results and it might even be that they're doing it slightly differently than you expected or they've augmented it in some way. And the stories that have been coming through our Facebook group from what you've been doing recently have just been amazing and you've been sharing some great stuff. So just before we get there, though, just let's kind of wind the clock back a couple of years. What what was the state of your business like and, this, and what kind of state were you in as a business owner before you discovered WP Elevation? Uh, okay. So this takes me back about a year and eight months ago. I actually had just purchased um, another company, another WordPress company. I'd sold a house, bought a company. My buddy was retiring and wanted to get a regular job. And so I had taken on a whole bunch of clients and I was burning the candle at both ends, working 14 hours a day, trying to onboard these clients, uh, which turned out most of them I didn't even want. I, I shouldn't have even had these clients. And that's one of the things that, that, that helped. Uh, is the training is being able to say no. Uh, but I was really just struggling with um, be onboarding these clients, and I just needed to have a change uh, with my business. Now, I was supporting WordPress websites, I was building new WordPress websites, and I was charging 3300 bucks a month for my average. You know, I went back and I looked, the average website was $3,300, and I realized I was undercharging, which is why I was working so many crazy hours. It's just I was frustrated. And uh, I just needed some help. How did you find WP Elevation? What was the first touch point? Do you remember? Yeah, you, you got me on a Facebook ad. <laughs> uh, it, it was the uh, proposal. It was the proposal template. And I, I remember downloading it, looking at it, and realizing just how weak of a proposal system I had. You know, I, I, It would be a Word document, and it was different every time. And the, the language, you know, I had a master service agreement over here. And then I had the actual statement of work. And I needed to combine them. Anyway, it was a total mess. So I, I, I actually read that and I said, okay, let's see what else they have to offer. And I signed up like two days later. Um, yeah. I was really, I was really uh, ready to go. I think there's something to learn there for everyone too, because the the that that one proposal template, that one lead magnet, has generated. I, I shudder to think how much that's been worth to our business. Because, and I think the lesson is that if you've got a great offer and you've got an actual you know, a, a real solution to a real problem. You don't need to have, you know, a hundred lead magnets and a hundred different funnels all leading into the one thing. Like one really good, solid, free giveaway can generate a huge uh, audience and, a, and you know, can help really help drive the business. Um, so you download the proposal template, you see some value in it, you, you go down the rabbit hole, you explore what else we have to offer, you end up joining a couple of days later. What happens then? What's your experience as you're onboarded into WP Elevation? What's the first couple of weeks look like for you? Yeah, um, I realized I had so much to do on my website. Like I went through the actual blueprint, like homework before you actually start, and I realized how much I was just missing of just some really basic stuff. Um, and I, I didn't let it get me down, right? I, I I knew I had some help here and some guidance. Um, so it was it was actually I was a flurry of activity because I was really excited about making some changes. Um, and I realized that many of my clients that I was trying to help, I just, I needed to like, I needed to cut some bait there. I needed to cull the herd. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was just an exciting time because there was just a lot of things that I, that I really needed to do to up my game. Culling the herd's a scary thing, isn't it? Getting rid of some mm -hmm. old legacy clients. Mm -hmm. I, I, now, you, now in, in the interest of complete transparency, you and I have met a couple of times in real life. And I know that, 
the, I think the reason that you're, you know, it, such a pleasure to have in the community and taking so much great action and, and one of our success stories is because you just got such a great mindset, dude. Like, I've I got to say, you just got such a great mm. positive outlook and such a great, you know, never quit, don't give up, keep going mindset. But even having said that, getting rid of old clients is a scary proposition, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And actually, I, I got rid of uh, this is about three months ago. I had a, a top five revenue client, you know, for, spent forty thousand dollars with me the previous 10 months. Um, and I had to fire them because they consistently gave me bad data, like they wanted something fixed. and They gave me the, the worst information. I couldn't be successful. And it was driving my designer crazy. And I just had to make the call, and I and I felt I felt immediately better. Like I wasn't thinking about that when I went to bed, or you know, stewing about you know their requests. But um, it was scary at first. Uh, but I I had 134 clients, you know, a year and a half ago, and I have 57 now, and I am more profitable <laughs> with 57 clients than with 134 oh, because damn. I got I got rid of all the just tire kickers and just. You know, time wasters and people that really didn't actually want to invest in their business and actually do something that just wanted to kind of just, you know, kick things around. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love this story. Uh, Jasmine Andrews, we had her on as a case study uh, a, a fair while back, and she basically said the same thing. She works with fewer clients now, is doing more mm-hmm. revenue, more profit, less stress. She's able to add more value to the clients that she's got because she's not being drained by these clients who, you know, where, where the relationship is just not a good fit. Yeah. Um, so you go through the first uh, six weeks of the blueprint, then you drop into the membership. Talk talk about how, talk to me about how the community has made a difference to uh, just, you know, just having that community there that you can lean on to ask questions and get support from. Yeah, well, I, I get a ton of great ideas. Um from the community on what people are experimenting on. Uh, lead generation is one example. Um, also just how people talk about their positioning and people talk about dealing with clients and just having a place where I know everyone is invested in their business. Like it's not just a, one of those, you know, 10,000 member WordPress groups where you don't know who you're dealing with. It's, it's a very select people that are really focused on, on really growing and they're, they're invested in it. And I, and I don't know, it's, it's a wonderful community too. I mean, I come to your, your live events, I've been to two of them. Um, and, it, and that too is just like, I, I love, you know, I'm in love with all of all, all y'all and, uh, you know, and, and it's really led to, you know, partnerships, you know, outside, you know, I have one, another WP elevation member now is mm. handling the support for thrive. They're now actually taking on my support client items because we want to focus on new developments. So there's definitely partnership, arrangements that um, have really yielded some fruit. Yeah, yeah. I've heard, this is completely off script, but I've heard a lot of feedback over the years from people who aren't in WP Elevation. From the outside, they say, oh, that thing's a bit of a cult. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Is that that how it feels? I've never never heard that. i I got to be honest. I've I've done other things in my life, like personal development kind of systems where they're like, oh, that's a cult. I never heard it actually may say that, but uh, that's interesting. Well, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, whatever it is. (laughs) Fantastic. Um, So now recently you've been posting in the group about some uh, lead gen activities that you've been undertaking, Mm -hmm. some strategies that you've been using to generate some leads. And in the interest of complete transparency, which is one of my favourite sayings, I do want to talk about the fact that – it's not all rainbows and unicorns, is it? When you first start off with these lead gen strategies, so yeah. talk, talk to us about the talk to us about first of all what it is you've been trying, and then also uh, how how do you get through that first couple of weeks when nothing happens and you get you you don't actually get any results? Yeah, um, a big one was uh, cold email. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try this cold email thing. I, I it was very targeted though. I, I worked in the construction niche. I, I got a list, like it was a very well curated list. I sent out a thousand emails and, you know, almost all the responses were like, you know, no thanks, et cetera. And really out of all of them, all thousand emails, it was a bit five email sequence. I only converted one so far, hmm. but it was a $19,000 project. And my return on investment on that was huge. But I, when I was first going through it, I was like, oh man, this is like, maybe I should just, you know, just shut this thing off and stop. And same thing with actually calling companies and companies that are in the niche I target, construction. 
that I'm a member of their same association they're a member of and just calling them and saying, hey, you know, notice we're in the same membership, notice some issues on your website, create a video for you. Can I, you know, I want to send that off to you. You can take care of it yourself or have me take care of it. Um, that at first, nothing was happening, right? Like I was just fresh in, in the calls and I was, you know, kind of nervous and green, but hmm. as I went hmm. along, you know, I just, I kept at it. And so that's now yielded more. Um, see what else, uh, actually belonging to that association, you know, niching down is something that I've gotten coaching through, through WP Elevation, through the members too. Like just mm. every, people are talking about that is such an important part of a business becoming very focused on, you know, one particular niche, whatever it is. Um, other kinds of outreach, uh, you know, let's see, I email phone, the association, oh, an agency partnership. So this mm. is a huge one for me. So working with other agencies, figuring out what their sweet spot is, making sure it's something that's different from my sweet spot. And, you know, maybe they do plumbing websites, so they only do e-commerce or whatever, and referring them business and having them refer to my sweet spot. That's one thing I've been just organizing together uh, to, to, you know, it helps the whole community and it helps everyone be the superpower uh, clients that they have, you know, they can work on their superpower clients. So those are my main ones, but I had to really not stop at just two weeks of activity, not be too frustrated. And how do you do that? Because uh, like I know from my own experience that, and I've got a, you know, I mean, dude, I reckon I've got the shortest concentration span in the world. So like I get, yeah. if I'm like half an hour into something and it's not working, I'm like, ah, what's going on? You know, and I just yeah. throw my hands in there. How do you, what's the, what, like tactically, how do you make sure that you get through the first, you know, 10 days or two weeks until you start seeing some traction? Because Every day you've got to turn up and you've got to stay positive and you've got to keep doing this yeah. and you've got to stay motivated. What, what yeah. like tactically, how do you protect yourself or how do you like keep energizing yourself to keep going even when even when nothing's happening? Yeah, the first thing is I just trust in the coaching I've received that that has to be done that way. And second is I actually do block out a time. I block out an hour time. Um, one thing I do in the morning is uh, first thing is I write three things that I need to accomplish that day. Mm. And, I, and I, I don't try to make them huge, but I just make sure these are the three things I have to accomplish. And so one of them will be call 15 prospects on my, on my list. Another one could be call 10 clients to talk about the care plan thing that I'm doing that week or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, and one thing, one thing also uh, as far as lead generation is, you know, with those 57 clients, I need to check in with them every six months just to have a conversation, see how things are going. And it's crazy what, what are, what's coming out of that. I mean, you know, you know, as you know, like the easiest people to sell to are people you've already sold to, like yeah. existing clients. And um, these calls I did, I did, I think it was about 20 last week of that 57. And I got four different support requests that came out of it and two leads for brand new websites because they're, you know, clients that just need a refresh. Mm. Um, so yeah, I trust in the coaching and I set aside the time and I put that list in the morning of I, these are the things I have to get done that day. And I don't do Facebook um, until or, or other kind of you know, no video games. You know, I have this like this limit and it, it, it tests my willpower, but I just trust in the process and it really does work for me. Brian Tracy wrote a great book once called Eat the Frog, which the, you know, too long didn't read version is you, you take the biggest, <laughs> ugliest, hairiest, scariest activity that you have to do today and you do it first thing and just get it yeah. out of the way. And then you've got the rest of the day to yourself to, you know, yeah. do social media or do Facebook or biz dev or yeah, make videos. Or like while you're fresh too, like yeah. in the morning, like you're up, you're ready to go and like hit, yeah, to eat, eat, I, I've heard that one. I didn't read it, but I've heard that. Yeah, it's a good book. Um, for those who are watching this, for, for the very small percentage of people who will be watching this podcast on our blog, uh, they might notice that you've got a green wall behind you. Can you talk to us uh, about the green screen behind you and, and what, what part that plays in your overall business strategy? Yeah, so I, you know, I do everything virtually uh, with clients, with my developer who's in the U.K., and uh, it's really a positioning thing. So when I when I get onto a call, it's always Zoom, mm. and Zoom has that virtual background where you can just hit the green color and put whatever you want. Mm. And so I put you know this panoramic view of an office in downtown Seattle with a sunny sky and like a view of the water and the Space Needle, and it actually it fools people. And I and I let I let them know what's up. I mean, but they they just it's kind of this little magic moment where there's this immediate positioning of. Like he has a setup. 
I usually then switch it to my Thrive background, which is purple with the Thrive logo to just ha kind of have that branding and keep myself, you know, keep that. I mean, it's, they're going to have a whole call with me where it's going to say Thrive in the corner with that purple gradient. So um, there's that brand recognition right there. Uh, and it and it's just fun, and I'm a nerd, so you know there's always that. <laughs> awesome. Hey, I'm just gonna ask a question off camera here, Seb. Do you know how to use the Alpha Channel in Final Cut Pro? Yeah, we're gonna figure it out. I tell you what, you are uh, uh, Noah. What's, what's off the channel? What's that? Noah, you're gonna send me the backdrop that you normally use on those calls, right? Oh and, yeah. And when yeah. we when we edit this when we edit this podcast video to, to to publish it, I'm gonna get Seb to replace the green screen we've got right here. And and there's a moment where where Noah's we're gonna have the background behind Noah, so you guys who are watching the podcast can see what we're talking about. You'll be able to find uh, everything at wpelevation.com if you go there and check out the podcast, check out the episode with Noah Britton, and then you'll be able to watch it and see what we're talking about. Because it's super fun. Um, so you, how long have you been with WP Elevation now? A uh, year and eight months. A year and eight months. And, yep. um, and so uh, what, what, what does it mean? Like what's, what's the, what does the business look like now in terms of the transformation that's happened since you've joined over the last year and eight months? What, what, are, the, what are the big changes apart from, you know, firing half of your clients who, who, who weren't yeah. a good fit? Yeah. Um, wow. The – my pricing has changed drastically. Hmm. Uh, you know, I, I'm always looking at numbers. I'm just, I'm a real number spreadsheet guy. And, you know, like I said, it was 3,300 before hmm. I started WP Elevation was my average. And my average from the moment I finished the blueprint, right? So that's six weeks. Uh, like I hear 10,991. So almost three times uh, the wow. actual price. But it, it's more than just price, right? Like hmm. I am charging, you know, like three times as much for, the same type of brochure website, but the mm. quality is so much higher too because like our process, our process for development has really improved. I, I you know my, my actual designer and developer is like super top notch. I'm just not, I'm just not going cheap on my developers and I'm not going cheap on my clients. Um, and care plan, same thing. Care plan was 2,400 a month was my care plans when I started. Mm. I'm at 5,800 right now and really the vast majority of that is just price increases. And I went through um, the care plan uh, masterclass. Yeah. Uh, that was awesome. And, um, and you know, I, it just, it really just changed my whole care plan. The way I, the way I talk about it, the way I present it on the website, um, the monthly reports, all that good stuff. You know, it's interesting. Um, I was driving around, I, like I'm a firm believer that people trust processes more than they trust people, right? Because people behave inconsistently Whereas a process, as long as it's followed, a process delivers consistent results, more consistent results than, than just people without a process. And I was driving around the, the streets of my local area yesterday, coming back from the, the grocery store, and there was a big real estate sign on the side of the road, and I can't remember who it was for, but the tagline was, um, if you want to sell something you love, in other words, your home, then hire someone who lives here. Uh, mm -hmm. Over 130 years experience. Now, this real estate agent has been operating in our local area for over 130 years, which is a remarkable feat. And um, the people that work there, of course, haven't been working there for 130 years, right? The people that's, that, that's old person. Correct. The people that work there now have probably been there maybe, I don't know, like they could have been there three years or five years or ten years. But they've been trained in the process that that real estate company has developed over the last 130 years of selling homes in our area, right? So that's a long time. Maybe maybe they've got 130 years collective experience between them. I don't know what that tagline means. But anyway, the point is they have a process. So when they hire someone, they plug that new real estate agent into their process that they know works to sell to sell homes and and buyers and sellers and vendors trust that process more than they trust a person. So I see this everywhere. I see processes being followed and and if the if the process isn't working, you start to feel a bit nervous. It's like when you buy something online. If you buy, you know, some clothes or a new video game or a console or a new microphone online, you expect to get an email within a couple of minutes confirming your your purchase with a receipt, shipping details, and then you expect to get regular updates via email or text to let you know where your thing is in the world, a shipping tracking number you know, when it's going to be delivered, all that kind of stuff. And if you don't hear from that company for a couple of days, you start to feel a bit nervous and you realise that the process is is broken and that breeds mm. a little bit of mistrust, right? So 
how and and, on, and it's the funny thing is process. We have a lot of processes in WP Elevation that we teach, as you know, but it's a hard thing to explain unless you've experienced it, right? So I, I wonder if you can just talk for a minute about like the, the kind of the processes that you've discovered in WP Elevation that yeah. you weren't expecting. Yeah, um, my entire process is so set now and it just by having it set, it's it makes me feel so comfortable. So that, you know, I have a 15 minute call with clients and then I have the actual like intake with the form and then the go wide, go deep and then writing the proposal and the actual review of the proposal on a call, like having those set. And, you know, I even like explain it to clients like this is the process you're going to go through. Like they know the steps ahead of time of what they're going to be taken through. There's buy in from the very beginning and it makes them feel comfortable and it makes me feel comfortable because I know all the questions I'm going to be asking in the order I'm going to be asking. And I've been able to change that and, you know, add my own spices to it. Mm. Uh, but really that intake, discovery, proposal, delivery, collect that 50% deposit. That is a very streamlined and comfortable process for me. Um, and actually like my, my, my most favorite part of that whole process. So, you know, when we're having that call with the client and, you know, we've done the intake of their information and the very last part of that go, I go deep call, we ask them, you know, what superpower do we bring or do I bring to this project? That's, you know, that's always my favorite, mm. my favorite question to ask. And then just that, that awkward silence and just, yeah, yeah, I have a yeah. note, I have a note actually in my process says, Noah, this is where you shut the hell up. <laughs> you know, and just sit in that, like, you know, let's hear what they have to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just, uh, that whole process through and, you know, the conversion, my, it would, I ended up converting a whole bunch of uh, clients, but they, the people that get cut out before they even get to actually talk to me mm. on that second call, I, I drop off a lot of them. Um, and it's really nice to be able to, to do that, to yeah. be able to say, no. do yeah. you, what, what's your approach when you, when you have to politely let someone know that, you know, we're not a good fit. What, what, you, how, what's your standard line? Like, how do you deal with that? Cause it can be an awkward conversation, right? Yeah. Uh, if it's, it, it usually has to do with budget. And, you know, I'll, I'll say something to the effect of, you know, to deliver on your project goals, your your budget just isn't the right fit here. Mm -hmm. So we can refer you to somebody else that that could do something else for you at a at your budget, but it's just not going to work for us. Yeah. So, I mean, I, did, I try to keep it simple and yeah, short. Totally. And it's yeah. it's I think people respect that 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 kind of candor that you're not going to over promise something that you can't deliver. I, I think people, even though they might be disappointed, it's like. You know, it's it's not me, it's you kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I and think that's like the opposite. That's the opposite of old Noah. The old Noah is like, I'll make it work. You know, I'm I was a, you know I'm a yes man. I'm gonna make you happy. I'm here to satisfy you and your needs, regardless if it even can be done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was a real like, like that was a a mind shift change throughout my life, not just in WP Elevation. And, yeah. yeah. And, it's, it's it's been it's been great doing. I think that. it's really I think it's a really common thing when people first start out is they feel like they have to say yes to everything just to keep the customer happy because that's how you grow a business through word of mouth. But one thing I learned early on is that if you say yes to projects that end up being not profitable because they just don't have enough money to achieve what they want to achieve, they end up referring you more work like that, and you end up just yeah. you know going down. A, down a downward spiral exactly where you're just running out of money and you just i remember i literally got a brief once where this guy wanted to build he, he he called it a social network he meant facebook he said i want to build a social network for homeopaths and i've got about 500 dollars. and i yeah. thought well you know okay well buddy boss will i mean buddy press will probably do this this is before <laughs> buddy boss buddy press will probably do this i said yeah okay sure i can do it and three weeks later i'm like i'm sorry dude i have to give you your deposit back i just there's no way i can do this it's just you know it's yeah. going to take me years um it's just not possible. Um, awesome. So uh, for those who have been kind of hovering around the edges and, and are, are aware of WP Elevation but kind of still feel like it's a bit of a, you know, they're not really sure what's inside or they're not really sure, you know, what to expect, what would what would your advice to them be? Uh, the thing that, you know, I had the proposal and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm really thinking about this, but Cammie, uh, Cammie is actually a member of WP Elevation. Mm -hmm. And I knew her locally and I actually had coffee with her and that just hearing her story, like mm -hmm. for me, it was somebody I knew. She's like, Noah, you got to do this. It's ridiculous. Um, she just knew how much I needed it e even more than I did. 
Um, so to, you know, if you're thinking about doing it, I mean, I think it's just these stories, like, like real agencies that are having these transformations and these mindset and these, these, these distinctions. I mean, I thought I had a process. I mean, it's funny because I look back and I'm like, oh, I was so organized. I had a process. Um, but, but, you know, I really, I needed help and I was afraid to ask for help. Like I was like, that's, that's one of the things I've been in business 17 years, but mm. I was really this lone wolf. You know, like I didn't have a community around me. Um, community has been such a big part of this. Um, you know, and I have, you know, I have zoom calls with other, you know, members of WP Elevation that are just off. We're just, we're just buds and we're hanging out and just talking about our agencies outside of WP Elevation. Mm. Um, it really is just like the community is such a big part of it and having that. I mean, I, I was, I mean, I was lonely. I mean, really, I was working from home and I was lonely um, and I didn't have like real peers. Like I didn't really have real coaches in my life. And you have, in my judgment, you have to have coaches in your life, regardless if it's business or not. You got to have people that are on a high level that trickle down that information to you. Yeah, totally. Um, big shout out to Cammy too. She, she's she been a great member of WP Elevation. And I, I can't tell you the amount of times I've heard this, that when I'm at live events or on calls with people or even in our, our survey when people join up, what made you join WP Elevation? And they say, because I knew someone who was in the program and I actually jumped on a call with them or I met them or I had lunch with them and they said, look, you just got to do this. And that actual personal recommendation was the thing that got them over the line. So um, It is a cult. That's it, Troy. It is a cult. You are you're right. So the blood samples on the second week. And... <laughs> That's right. And the call aids in week six. That's fantastic. I love it. All right. Uh, hey, Noah Britton, this has been super fun. Thank you so much for spending some time with us on the podcast and sharing your story. I really appreciate it. And uh, look forward to seeing you hopefully in early uh, 2020 when we're back out in the States. Yeah, that's my plan. Thanks, Troy. Awesome, man. Thanks, Noah. Take care. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's another episode of the WP Elevation podcast. Please get on over to wpelevation.com slash iTunes and subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a rating and a review. And also check us out on Facebook and YouTube, which is where we are most active. I look forward to speaking with you again soon on the podcast. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.